Hello, welcome to our video solution to problem two from Super Quiz 2. In this problem, we're trying to find the largest and smallest values, i.e. the global maximum and global extreme uh, minimum, of a function g, given here, uh, on the unit disk. So this will be uh, essentially the unit circle, but filled in. In fact, it's always a good idea to, to sketch these graphs so you know what it is you're talking about. So we're going to draw a unit circle. All right, so you get all this stuff. Boy, that, that's, that just feels really bad right there, doesn't it? Yeah, all right, okay. Not perfect, but okay. So we get a unit circle, uh, and then we fill it in, which makes it into the unit disk. Now, in order to find global extrema, we want to use the extreme value theorem since we're working in a closed bounded region. So by the extreme value theorem, All right, so by the extreme value theorem, to find uh, global extrema, we check the critical points of G on the disk. Okay, that's step one. And, and we don't care about anything which is off the disk, right? If you had a critical point over here to the left, we don't care about it because well, it's not in the disk, right? We only care about the max values and min values on the disk. So we're going to check those global, uh, the, rather those critical points of G on the disk and all points on the boundary of D. Okay, which is very often denoted uh, with this partial derivative symbol, which is confusing, particularly in a class on multivariable calculus where we're using partial derivatives. Nonetheless, this is the symbol that mathematicians tend to use for the boundary. Okay, so, uh, so step one, we need to find the critical points. So find the critical points of G and uh, doing that, of course, is going to require us to compute the gradient and set it equal to zero. So the gradient here will just be the partial of g with respect to x, comma, the partial of g with respect to y. So gx is going to be 1, and gy will be 4y. And at this point, we're pretty satisfied we found all the critical points because we haven't found any, and you're not going to get any. In order for the zero vector to equal one comma anything, you would need for zero to equal one. And of course, zero doesn't equal one. So uh, as zero does not equal one, there are no critical points. Fantastic. So all we have to do now is check the boundary. All right, so let's try step two. Step two, we're going to check g on the boundary. Now, on the boundary, we're not worried about x squared plus y squared being less than or equal to 1. Now we're, we only have to worry about x squared plus y squared equaling 1. So the boundary of d is given by x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. This is an extra constraint. So we can actually solve this using Lagrange multipliers. All right, so we have a function, this, this g, right? So remember that g of xy is x plus 2y squared plus 1. And we have a constraint curve. All right, so we have this constraint, x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. And heck, maybe we'll give that a, a name like f. Okay, so we're going to use Lagrange multipliers to find where the function g is either a max or a min along this constraint curve. So to do that, I need to find where the gradient of g is equal to some multiple of the gradient of f, right? If you like, the gradient of g is parallel to the gradient of f. Well, we've already computed the gradient of g, right? So that's 1 comma 4y. And how about lambda times the gradient of f? Well, the gradient of f is pretty easy. You'll get 2x comma 2y. So this will be lambda times 2x comma lambda times 2y. 
All right, so we now get a system. We have lambda times 2x is equal to 1. We have lambda times 2y is equal to 4y. And, of course, we have the constraint curve. x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. Okay, let's go about trying to solve this. So, uh, well, this second one has y's on both sides, which feels like maybe a fun place to start. So why don't we not divide, right? Remember, our goal is to try to avoid dividing because that makes us, you know, miss out when we're dividing by zero. Like, that's just really, really bad. So we'll subtract instead. Um, and when I subtract, I'll be able to factor out a y. So I'll have y times, we'll see, you'd get 2 lambda minus 4 is equal to 0. So when I have a product of numbers equaling 0, then I know one of them has to be 0. So either y is equal to 0 or 2 lambda minus 4 is equal to 0. And of course, the second one, that would imply lambda is equal to 2. All right, well, let's test these two situations. So if y is equal to 0, then I can go to the third equation and I'll get that x squared is equal to 1, which would tell me that x is equal to plus or minus 1. All right, well, that's, that's certainly a possibility now, right? So we get what we called constrained critical points when x is 1 and y is 0, or when x is negative 1 and y is 0. All right, now, in, we really should actually check to make sure that the third equation can still be satisfied. And if x is equal to uh, plus or minus 1, well, then certainly you can solve this equation on top for, for lambda, right? There will be a solution. So, so no, no problem there. And if you're in a situation where you actually want to know what the lambda is, right? Because remember, we do have an interpretation of lambda. Well, then maybe you want to do that. Okay, well, what if uh, we're in the other situation where lambda is equal to 2? Well, if lambda is equal to 2, then we have this top equation here, which will tell us that, let's see, 2 times 2x, so 4x is equal to 1, which would imply that x is equal to 1 fourth. Now I can plug that into the third equation. So when x is a fourth, then if I square that, I'll get a sixteenth. And so I'll have y squared is 1 minus 1 16th, or 15 16th. And so y will be plus or minus root 15 over 4. And so I get two more constrained critical points. x is 1 fourth, and y is either going to be root 15 over 4, or y will be negative root 15 over 4. Okay, so these are the only two situations I can have. I end up with four constrained critical points, and now I just want to evaluate G to determine which of these constrained critical points is giving me the largest value and which is giving me the smallest value. So let me copy my function G here. This was X plus 2Y squared plus 1, and now we're just going to evaluate G at all four of these constrained critical points. So g of 1 fourth, root 15 over 4. And well, I'm actually going to put plus or minus here. And the reason why is because when I look at my function g, I notice that the only appearance of the y coordinate comes with a square, which means it can't tell if there's a plus sign or a minus sign in front of the y, because it's going to square the sign away. So let's see here. When x is 1 and y is 0, you get 1 plus 0 plus 1 is 2. Uh, then when x is negative 1 and y is 0, you get negative 1 plus 1 is 0 plus 0 is 0. And then when x is a fourth and y is either root 15 over 4 or negative root 15 over 4, well, let's write that out. You get 1 fourth plus twice. Well, let's see. When you squared this, you got 15 over 16 plus 1. And let's see here. So this is going to be 15 over 8. So I can write everything over 8 if I like. So this will be 2 over 8 and 8 over 8. That's 10 over 8 plus 15 over 8 is 25 over 8. And so a quick look. We see that is going to be our maximum value. And 0 is going to be the minimum value. 
Okay, so on that disk that we had up above, at negative one zero, this was going to end up giving us our minimum. And at one fourth, so that's about here, up on the, it's going to be on, we knew it was going to be on the curve, all right? So at one fourth, and then, well, <laughs> the way I've drawn it makes it tough to see how high it is, but this will be root 15 over four. That will actually give us our maximum value for G. All right? So this is max value for G. Not for the circle, right? But for G. Okay, and that's how we can put together the extreme value theorem as well as the method of Lagrange multipliers.